guys, this is uh, Leif, aka Evil Nerd Inc. again. Uh, today I just wanted to do a quick little demonstration on this shard convergence um, to show you two things. One is how much I'm thinning the paint that I'm going to be using, uh, and then the second is also the basic technique for blocking out um, your blocking out your background. So uh, the tools that I'm going to be using in this to give you a demonstration, I'm going to be using um, Citadel Paints. Uh, this is Dawnstone. I'm shooting this upside down, by the way. So when I'm looking at things, that's why I'm holding it like this. And then, you know, when I'm showing to the camera, um, I'll do it like that because I'm trying to shoot in high definition to give you guys a better idea of what I'm doing. So I, I'm going to be using uh, a gray paint. Uh, I'm going to be using a flat brush. Uh, this is kind of a, a cheaper one. I've talked about this before in my setup video, and I use this for all of my blocking out. Uh, the card that I'm working on is Shard Convergence, which is a commission. Um, and then my palette, which I've cleaned up for you guys uh, to demonstrate. I've also got some paper towels and my uh, Tupperware of water here, so my, my water container. Um, uh, something that actually I want to, before I get too far into it, I want to talk about. Um, the other day I went and bought uh, Citadel paint and I got part of their their line and they're calling them dry paints now. Uh, if you decide that you want to go and do something like this of your own, get layer paints, foundation paints, uh, but stay away from the dry and the washes, I want to say, I think that they call them, shade. Um, because those have different consistencies. Um, the the dry is very very pigment filled, and uh, like if 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 I open it up, you can see it it doesn't really move. I can turn it upside down, and and it won't even come to the top. So uh, whereas when I shake my oh, I shake my gray paint, um, it's going to pull here in the top. Uh, which is where I actually pull my paint from. So the reason I'm saying that that's designed for something different with miniatures and these are miniature paints that I'm using. So for um, when we're using them for, for card car alterations, you don't actually want to use that line. So be aware of, of that just as a, a warning to anybody that's that's going out and doing that. I'll, I'm going to experiment with those later on and, and let you know how that goes and what kind of uses that they can have. But for now, I'm just going to talk about a standard acrylic paint. So um, what I'm going to do is take some of this gray and add it onto my palette. And basically I just got two drops worth. And then I'm gonna take my brush and just dip just the, let me move this over, make sure you can see it, just the edge in there. And uh, I actually add the water to the side and then kind of mix the paint in. And if you look very carefully, uh, if I grab the paint on my brush and pull it, you can actually see how much consistency it has by how fast it's falling down. So this is this is a rather thin uh, coat. I'm going to go ahead and use this to start off because um, with the base coat, sometimes I end up doing multiple layers and uh, you want to keep it thin. So you can see what I'm doing here. Um, you can still see the border through as I'm painting onto this. Uh, the, you can still see the background coming through. The, I'm going to go over this and do another layer. The reason that I'm not concerned about that is the fact that um, when I'm when I'm painting onto this card, what I'm trying to do basically with this this initial layer that I'm putting on is just to give uh, a layer that the the later layers are actually going to grab onto. As weird as it sounds, I'm not terribly concerned with blocking out all the color just yet with this with this layer that I'm doing. Uh, you can see that I'm using my paper towel behind here and when it starts getting a little dirty I just flip it over but by the time that I would flip it back it'll be dry so um, so I've seen a number of people that when they're when they're working on a card they'll use a magic eraser or some sort of um, eraser and take off the borders that'll thin the card a little bit and it um, it provides them the grit that they need for additional layers of paint on the, on the surface. Uh, I don't like doing this one because it damages the card. Um, it's actually abrasing the surface to the point where 
um, if the paint chipped off or something like that, like you would have a white surface on underneath. Um, I prefer to do a method where I'm just applying the paint onto the surface of the card. Um, if you actually removed the paint from my card, which isn't that difficult to do, you would see the original card there. So there's never a question about my cards being um, actual magic cards or not. Um, and the, the the trick though is that you have to do this in, in very thin layers. If you do this in too thick of layers, uh, you're going to get kind of chunky paint. And as I'm going to be adding the different colors on later, um, the black and the gray and the white and the green and red on the side and, and blue and all of this, um, those layers are gonna those layers are gonna add up. So you basically have to keep it thin the entire time. So. I put my first layer on and it basically dried. Uh, I didn't go down to the border. I didn't finish everything. Just I'm, I'm just doing this as a quick tutorial. Um, and now I'm taking a slightly thicker layer. Uh, I basically just grabbed some more paint and I used the water that was still on my palette rather than introducing more water. And uh, I'm just going over. And you can see that with the second layer, I'm getting pretty good coverage on the shard convergence that the the border especially on this side that 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 black that harsh black line is actually disappearing so um that's the basic of how you're going to be blocking this out i use the gray because it's light enough that with these lighter colors like this white and stuff it will not be too big of an issue and then with the darker colors you know uh, um if you use a very dark color for the background uh, to, to block out if, for instance, I say use a black or a dark blue, uh, going to a lighter color will be a lot more problematic. And then at the same time, if I, it's more difficult to block colors out with a light color. So that's why I use something in between. I use a gray. Um, it would actually be easier to block out with a, with a black, but then it kind of defeats the purpose if I go to a light color, like taking these lighter colors right here over the edges I end up having to put multiple multiple layers by doing a gray. Uh, I can I save myself some some work down the line. So I always just suggest to start with uh, a gray base, but I'll leave that up to your own discretion. Um, so you can see that just basically by applying a few very thin layers, uh, I'm getting the desired effect that I want. This is essentially the the first step in the process. I may go over it a little bit more. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to have to go down here and finish this border and uh, finish the the top a little bit more as well because there's there's still some green showing through there. But I'd, I'd retouch all those. Uh, I, I just wanted to show this through for one point. Um, one, one other tip that I want to give you um, I don't. I don't necessarily do that this much anymore um, for the borders because I've been doing so many cards. But this comes down to how to draw a straight line. Uh, a lot of altruists, when we post online and stuff, people are pay a lot of attention to the borders here, to where there naturally is some border, so they know that there's a green or blue or whatever around there. And so you need to have very crisp lines um, mating up, which means you have to block out that color well. You have to uh, first put a base coat down and then add your additional colors. So your base coat starts by having nice straight lines. And one of the tricks that I would suggest you use is, um, I'm going to demonstrate with my hand. Your hand is it's much easier to draw a straight line going straight up and down um, rather than going side to side. If I go side to side, I contort my wrist a little bit like this, you'll see that uh, an arc happens. But just going up and down is is much straighter just freehanding. Um, th this makes a big difference. This is just an anatomy thing. This has nothing to do with being very skilled or anything like that. You're, the, the muscles, joints, and everything in your hand uh, make your range of motion for a straight line much easier to go like this up and down. Um, you can try it yourself and you'll see it's there. There's always a little bit of an arc when you go side to side. 
So that being said, when if I were to draw this line right here, I would want to. Yeah, I'm right-handed. You're you're seeing it probably the the other way through the camera. Um, I'd want to, to turn my canvas a little bit like this and then basically just pull straight down and I'm going to get my, my straightest lines. Um, so I would suggest that and also for, for getting very straight lines you, you basically want to um, to keep your hands from shaking or anything like that. People ask me all the time to have very very steady hands and I do have fairly steady hands um, but one of the tricks that I've learned with painting with miniatures is to basically lock my my forearms um, against the edge of the table and I'll lean up against them so that prevents my my arms from moving too much and then I'm just using my wrist movements uh, that's that's something for for miniature painting not all all artists will do that they'll use um, different techniques when they're working on larger canvases and stuff but for because we're working on a small scale image because this is only two inches by three inches it's effectively equivalent to painting something that's in a miniature scale so you don't want a lot of shakiness move moving so if that's those are issues that you run into either not being able to draw a straight line or uh, you find your hands moving a lot you know lean up against the table a little bit you know on your forearms and uh, also you can, you can, when I work with a miniature, like let's say that this is, uh, this, this paint pot were a miniature, I would lock my elbows and I would put my wrists together like this and then I would paint like so. Um, with my card though, because it's larger, I'm, I'm not going to hold it up and paint like that. It would be very, uh, the inorganic it wouldn't make sense so what I end up doing is uh, locking my my elbows in place a little bit by leaning on them but my hands are spread out more and then I'll use my left hand to turn the card or hold it into place just slightly and then I I paint with my right obviously and then I can I have good control over both so that's that's one small difference between painting miniatures and painting cards but hopefully those tips give you um, some direction and then this is the basic way of blocking it out so with the newer cards it's very easy you just basically follow around these borders you can go into the image a little bit but I, I suggest not going too far into it and then around here in the bottom if you had a creature you'll have the power toughness box down here which you would just paint around but everything is actually outlined so the only lines that you're breaking are here and here on older cards there's a little bit more setup and different versions depending on how you want to do that so uh, I'll do a different video to discuss th that project uh, specifically so hopefully you guys like this video if you do please uh, like or subscribe it and uh, I'll have a link up for the next video when that's done right about here so thanks